I am Dr. S. Kamalakannan, Professor in the Department of Electrical Electronics Engineering, SA Engineering College. Success is not just what you accomplish in your life, it's about what you inspire others to do. Today, my topic in gate coaching is power electronics and my subtopic will be sinusoidal pulse width modulation. Normally, internal voltage control of inverter is done by two ways. One is internal control and the other is external control. Here I am going to deal with the internal control. In internal control, I am going to take a pulse width modulation control technique. As the name indicates, here I am going to control the width of the pulse so that the output of voltage control can be established in the inverter. So how this is achieved? Is this is achieved by means of selecting two signals one is a reference signal and the other is a carrier signal. So these two signals will be taken into account then the output voltage of an inverter will be controlled. So what is the principle behind this is? I am taking a comparator where I will be giving two inputs. One is a reference input and other is a carrier input. So both the inputs will be compared here. Error will be generated. So that error will be taken to gate pulse generator. As the name indicates, the gate pulse generator will be generating the pulses. So that pulse will be taken to the switches which are present in the inverter circuit. So that is the one line of uh, principle of operation of uh, this particular topic. So here, what I am going to do means, I am going to take uh, two amplitude. That is, uh, one is nothing but reference amplitude, which is nothing but AR. And next is nothing but uh, carrier amplitude, which is nothing but AC. So as said earlier, what I am going to do means I am going to take uh, these uh, two amplitudes uh, and then I am going to put inside my comparator. So the comparator will compare these two signals, uh, that is nothing but AR, which is nothing but reference and other is nothing but carrier AC, both will be compared. So after comparing, what will happen means an uh, error will be generated, okay, that error in turn will be given to pulse generator, pulse generator in turn will be generating the pulse, that pulse in turn will be given to switches which are available in the inverter circuit, right? So this is the voltage control. So here I am going to follow three techniques. What are they means? Is one is a single pulse width modulation technique, two is a multiple pulse width modulation technique, and three is a sinusoidal pulse width modulation technique. Among these three, the third one will be very effective. Right. What a single pulse with modulation technique means, as the name indicates, I will be using only one pulse here. Okay. Next one is a multiple, so where I will be using a more than one pulse. And then last one, that is nothing but sinusoidal pulse with modulation technique, where I will be using a, the sine wave as a, the signal. Right. So we will see one by one. So this is the first one, that is nothing but single pulse with modulation technique. Right. So this is the waveform. Okay. Mm, where I am having uh, the carrier as less reference and then the gating signals. So here I will be uh, taking uh, this uh, triangular wave as uh, the carrier signal and uh, this rectangular wave as the reference signal. Right? So both will be uh, compared. Right? Uh, as a result of that what will happen means uh, the gate pulse will be generated. Right? What is the principle behind this means uh, I am comparing the carrier signal with the reference signal I will be going for uh, one particular condition which is nothing but greater than or less than. When the carrier is greater, what happens means the gate pulse will be generated. You can see very well from the waveform, the carrier, the carrier, the carrier signal is a greater. When the carrier signal is a greater, what will happen means the gate pulse will be generated. So this I am comparing with the reference signal. Right? But when the opposite case occurs, what happens means the gate pulse will not be generated. So that you can see in the waveform. Right. So this is the first half cycle. So during this first half cycle, these two, the two signals are taken into account and both are compared. So when the carrier is greater than the reference, the gate pulse is generated. Right. When the carrier is lesser than the reference signal, no gate pulse is generated. So in this way, it will be proceeding for the next half cycle also and then the gate pulse will be generated in this way. Then that will be taken to the switches which are present in the inverter circuit. So this is what is explained in this slide. See, as I told in the previous slide, I am comparing the amplitude of the carrier signal, okay, with that of what amplitude of the reference signal. So when it is greater, what happens means the gating pulse is generated, right? When it is smaller, what happens means there, there will be any gating pulse. 
this cell. So that was very much shown in the previous diagram. So using this particular method, I can control the output voltage of the inverter. But here I am using only single pulse width. That is a uh, next method is uh, what it is means uh, is a uh, multiple pulse width modulation technique. Uh. So you can very well analyze uh, this diagram of the previous. Okay, in the previous diagram, okay, we we had uh, uh, one triangular uh, uh, waveform and then uh, uh, one square waveform. I'm sorry, rectangular waveform. But here you are having a uh, multiple triangular wave, but you are having only one rectangular wave, right? So both will be compact. So here the triangular wave, multiple triangular wave uh, is the carrier, right? Then uh, this one rectangular waveform will be the reference. Both will be compared as in the previous case. Uh, same condition pertains here also. I am comparing AC with AR. So what happens means uh, when AC is greater than AR, gate pulse will be generated. Yes, you can see that in the waveform. See, uh, so this is a point where the carrier signal is more than that of the reference signal. So the gate pulse is generated here, right? But when you take this particular point, what happens means the carrier is lesser than that of the reference. Uh, so here there is no gating pulse. Uh, Right? So in this way what happens means uh, the gating pulse will be generated. So here this is the half cycle, this is the half cycle where you have uh, uh, the rectangular waveform as well as a multiple triangular waveform. Okay? So for this only we are generating the pulses. So the same way to be proceeding for the next half cycle also. This is same as that of the previous case. The only difference is what means uh, here you are using multiple triangular waveforms but in the previous case we had used only one triangular waveform. Rectangular waveform is the one the same. But this uh, method has suffers from one particular disadvantage is you can see the condition okay see carrier is greater than reference amplitude of carrier signal is greater than the reference signal gating pulse are generated right so on the other hand what happens when carrier signal is lesser than the reference signal gating pulse are not generated so this is same as it of the previous case right but uh, what happens so this uh, particular method uh, suffers from uh, one disadvantage yes you can see that in the last point Okay, from the from the waveforms of the multiple PWM technique, it is very obvious that all gating pulse have the same amount of pulse. Width. Is the width of the pulse is same? Okay, so when the width of the uh, pulse is same, what happens means that will become the main drawback drawback of this method. Okay, so in order to avoid this drawback, uh, we are going for a very effective method that is nothing but sinusoidal pulse width modulation technique. Uh, this method is totally different than compared to that of the previous two methods, uh, right? So when you take the third method, what happens means that here you are having again a carrier signal, again a reference signal. Okay. So here what happens means that the sine wave is acting as a reference signal, right? And then this triangular waveform is acting as a carrier signal, right? But in the previous case we had used rectangular waveform. In both the cases we had used rectangular waveform. But here we are using sine waveform. That's why it is called the sinusoidal pulse width modulation technique. So this is actually called as the half cycle. Okay, this is actually called as the half cycle. So here the condition is totally opposed to that of the first two cases. What it is means in the previous case, when the amplitude of carrier is more than compared to that of the amplitude of the reference, uh, gating pulse are generated. But uh, that is not the case here. What happens here means uh, is when the amplitude of the carrier is lesser than that of the reference, uh, the opposite case will take place. Uh, see here, the gating pulse are generated for this particular point. Okay, here yeah, there is no gating point, uh, pulses are generated. Is that is uh, explained in the next slide? Yes, you can see that. So you see, whenever the magnitude of the carrier signal is lesser, here carrier signal is lesser than that of the reference signal. What happens uh, at that point? The gating pulses are generated. But in the previous case, this is quite opposite. They, for this particular condition, the gating pulses are not generated. Right? See, on the other hand, what happens? Uh, is when the carrier is greater than reference, uh, your gating pulse are not generated. In the previous case, uh, uh, when uh, the carrier signal is greater than reference signal, gating pulse are generated. Okay, so uh, you can see very well the last point. Uh, what this means uh, the above conditions for generating pulses are exactly opposed to the generating gating pulses in the previous two techniques. Uh, what are the two techniques? A single pulse with modulation technique and other is multiple pulse with modulation technique. What had happened there is the carrier is more than compared to that of the reference. In that point, the gating pulse is generated, right? But here, when the carrier is more than that of the reference, gating pulse will not be generated. Okay, so once again going back to the diagram, yes, I can take the diagram. So when the carrier is more than that of the reference, no gating pulse are generated, no gating pulse, right? But here the gating pulse are generated for the opposite case, right? So these pulses will be given to the inverter switches. I mean the switches which are present in the inverter circuit. 
So this is a very effective method when compared to that of the other two methods, right? So what are the advantages of all these PWM techniques? Okay, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll take all the three methods. A comparison before that, yes. So the first method is a single pulse with modulation technique. Second method is a multiple pulse with modulation technique, as discussed earlier. The last one is a sinusoid pulse with modulation technique. So it is a shortly called as SPM, and this is a MPM, and the last one is SIM, which is very effective method. So what is the other name for single pulse with modulation technique? It means it is quasi square wave switching. Okay, quasi square wave switching. What is the other name for multiple pulse width modulation technique? It is uniform pulse width modulation. Why? The width is uniform throughout. That is a drawback. That's why it is also called as uniform pulse width modulation technique. Here, no other names are simply it is called as sign in. Right? So, as I already discussed, so the first two cases, we are taking one rectangular waveform as reference. Right? But what about the carrier means? In the first case, I am taking only one triangular waveform, but here I am taking multiple triangular waveform that is for one half cycle. Okay. So, what about the last one? In, in the last one, I am not taking rectangular waveform, I am taking sine waveform as a reference, but I am using triangular waveform as a carrier. Okay. So, here the reference is sine wave. But in this case, the reference is what? In the first two cases, a rectangular uh, signal is a reference signal. Right? Then what happens? What about the condition? Condition is, as I already mentioned, quite opposite. That is nothing but when the amplitude of the carrier is greater than that of the reference, gating pulse are generated. Okay, so that, that gating pulse will be given to the switches which are present in the inverter circuit. The same condition pertains to this multiple pulse with modulation technique also. That is nothing but AC greater than AR. That is nothing but carrier signal greater than that of the reference signal. A here indicates the amplitude. Okay. So, for that particular condition, the gating pulse will be generated. But uh, what about here is when the gating pulses are generated is when the amplitude of the carrier is lesser than that of the amplitude of the reference signal, at that point the gating pulse are generated. Okay. What are the last point uh, is that is nothing but uh, is uh, when the pulses are not generated in case of single pulse with modulation technique. Yes, when the carrier signal is less than that of the reference signal, in that case the gating pulses are not generated. So here also the same condition since both are the one and the same. Okay. Only thing is that we are reducing multiple a triangular carrier signal, we are reducing only one triangular signal. Right? So what is the third one? Third one is the quite opposite that of the first two cases. So it is nothing but amplitude of carrier signal is greater than that of the amplitude of the reference signal. Okay. So here in the gate syllabus, there is a sinusoidal pulse width modulation technique that is given in specific among the three types. Okay. Single pulse width modulation technique, multiple pulse width modulation technique, sinusoidal pulse width modulation technique is given the gate syllabus. Right? Why means it is a very effective method and then an application oriented method it is. That's, that's why it is given in the gate syllabus. Okay. That too was a last topic in power electronics. Right? So, what are the advantages and disadvantages? Any system will have advantage uh, and disadvantages. Right? So, what are the advantages of this uh, uh, pulse width modulation control? Yes, I am taking all the three. Okay? I am not uh, uh, giving uh, the advantages of each and every method. I am taking all the three. Okay? So, the first advantage uh, here, I am not going to use any addition components. Okay? So, I am not going to use any addition components for the output voltage control. Addition components in the sense I may go for active and then passive components, I am not going to use here. Right? Next one, very important one that is nothing but uh, is I am going to eliminate all my lower order harmonics. Okay, you have lower order harmonics as well as higher order, order harmonics in right? So I am going to uh, remove, eliminate all my lower order harmonics. When I remove all my lower order harmonics along with its output voltage control, it will become a very advantageous in the pulse width modulation technique. Right? Then uh, what about the filtering requirement? Uh, yes, it is a continuation of the second point. Okay, so here the filtering requirements are minimized. Uh, yes, sir. We, we are eliminating the lower order harmonics. Uh, so the filtering requirements will also be minimized here. Okay, the only disadvantage is the switch what I am using here. That is something that is here. Okay, so when I you uh, when I take uh, the switches into account, that switches will have very low turn on time and then low turn off times. Okay, not only that, they are uh, quite expensive in nature. Okay, so that will be the one of the disadvantage. However, they are compromising, okay. In spite of all these advantages, okay, uh, on a study but no addition components, uh, then uh, uh, removing of all wired order harmonics, uh, minimizing of uh, filtering requirements, uh, okay, so many advantages. Uh, so, this is only disadvantage, uh, okay. So, I am compromising for 
in that way, I am taking uh, this into account. Okay, so this is uh, given in uh, what is a subtopic uh, sinusoidal pulse width modulation under the topic of uh, our electronics. Uh, so it's a very important topic uh, in Okay, thank you. We'll continue.